The following is a paid program presented by Jersey Sports Zone and RWJ Barnabas Health. Coming up, Diamond Miller Shine Bright in New York City. JSZ was there as one of New Jersey's great basketball players saw her dreams come true at the WNBA draft. We've got championship level baseball in mid-April. Del Barton and Randy give us a thriller in a game featuring two of the very best from the state. Well, I was just aiming for your camera. The Roxbury softball team was right on target against Montville in a showdown of two of the best teams from Morris County. Rumps and Fairhaven lost in overtime to St. Augustine on their home field a year ago. The Bulldogs turn the tables in South Jersey. And get ready for a wild top 10 plays featuring the unusual and a whole bunch of amazing. Come on home for the best highlights from New Jersey high school sports. Jersey Sports Zone TV starts now. Welcome to another edition of Jersey Sports Zone TV, presented by RWJ Barnabas Health. I'm Rich Crampanis. Once again, we're here to celebrate another amazing accomplishment by one of our own. Franklin's Diamond Miller helped put JSZ on the map. Now she's made it all the way to the ultimate stage, the 2023 WNBA Draft, where her name was called very early. With the second pick in the 2023 WNBA Draft, the Minnesota Lynx select Diamond Miller. It honestly doesn't feel real right now. I'm still kind of soaking it in, but I'm super excited. This is all I want. This is, all, this is why I work so hard is to get to this moment, but work is just starting now. New Jersey basketball fans saw Diamond Miller put the work in over a spectacular four-year career at Franklin High that culminated with the 2019 Tournament of Champions title. Miller showed everyone that she was a special player back then, and a whole lot of hard work and a fantastic career at the University of Maryland resulted in a memorable night in New York City with the best players in the game. Every mock draft had her going number two to Minnesota, yet Diamond was still nervous leading up to the big moment. Hearing my name called was definitely like a relief moment of like, okay, you don't have to worry about this no more. And luckily for me, I only had to wait for one name before me, but it's super nerve wracking. And I'm just truly blessed to be the number two pick. This is all God's doing, so thank you to him. All of my glory goes to him. I'm so grateful. Just a few minutes before being selected, Diamond got to interact with WNBA Commissioner Kathy Engelbert, who like Miller, is a Garden State resident. I believe there is a sense of Jersey. Some Jersey people like to say only North and South. No, they're the Central. Diamond's parents, Driana and Lance Miller, were right by her side when her name was called. Diamond was whisked away to begin her life as a pro, starting with a call to Minnesota and the Lynx draft party. I love hearing our fans right now. I can't wait to see you guys in person. And I'm just extremely blessed that you guys picked me and I won't disappoint. Thank you. From there, it was talking to the national media as Miller looks to add to the Lynx legacy as four-time WNBA champions. My expectations is to be Diamond Miller as every, every time I step on a court and to continue to be passionate and love the game the way I always did when I was a little kid. So that, that is what I want to do. New Jersey girls basketball is on the map well beyond our borders thanks to Miller, who joins Manasquan's Marina Mabry as WNBA players. And this won't be the last time a New Jersey baller's on stage at the WNBA Draft. Reporting from New York City, I'm Rich Crampanis for JerseySportsZone.com. 
Hey, I'm Mike Frankel at St. Augustine Prep in Richland. Stick around because later in the show, it's the Jersey Sports Zone Top 10 Plays of the Week. We've once again rounded up the very best from all over the state, and we'll bring them to you coming up. JSZ will be right back. If you need to see a doctor, RWJ Barnabas Health has two easy ways to do it from anywhere. You can see an urgent care provider 24-7 on any device with our Telemed app. Or use our website to book a virtual visit with an RWJ Barnabas Health Medical Group provider or specialist, even as a new patient. You've taken every precaution, and so have we. So don't delay your care any longer. RWJ Barnabas Health. Let's be healthy together. for them we're here for you get back the life you love hey welcome back to the show i'm jay cook with jersey sports zone the second week of the high school softball and baseball season had plenty twists and turns and we closed the week out with a marquee matchup here on saturday perennial powerhouse del barton makes a trip down the shore to face off with ranny the state's number one ranked team the green wave opened with fireworks. Kevin Hager sends a big fly deep to left field. It's a two-run dinger for Hager. Del Barton jumps on the board first with a 2-0 lead. Top two, Delby goes yard again. This time it's Marco Maselli, and it leaves the yard quickly. Both of those home runs come against A.J. Gracia. The green wave take a 3-0 lead in the second inning. But the Panthers will answer right back. This shot from Curtis Kapruvka goes off Del Barton starter, A.J. Sacento. A runner will score, and we've got a 3-1 game. Bottom three now, and A.J. Gracia demolishes this pitch. It's deep to right center and gone. A solo blast from the Duke commit. Randy evens the game on a fielder's choice later in the inning, and we're tied up at 3-3. The fourth inning belonged to Gracia. He shook off that rough start and ends the top half of the inning with back-to-back -back strikeouts. And Gracia comes up again in the fourth and delivers once more. This time, it's an oppo taco. AJ Gracia, two solo homers in this game. Randy now leads four to three. And the Panthers are not done because Jack Talent gets a hold of this one and that's out of here. Talent with a two-run shot. The Panthers now hold a 6-3 lead as we're headed to the fifth inning. Nick Caniglio comes in relief for the Panthers, and the Green Wave make him pay. Sal Garcia uncorks a high fly to center field. Mark it down as a three-run bomb for Garcia, the freshman. That's the sixth home run of this game, and we're now tied up at six all. Rob Russo helps give Delby the lead just minutes later. This little chopper causes problems at third, and we've got the go-ahead run. Del Barton is in front, 7-6. Now we're going to fast forward to the seventh. A.J. Gracia is on with two outs, and he steals second base successfully. The tying run is in scoring position. But Aiden Dill buckles down on the mound, and strikes out Brett Waringer to end the game. Del Barton emerges from a slugfest with a 7-6 win. Mark it down as an early game of the year nominee. The Green Wave take out the number one team in New Jersey. Yeah, I mean, coming into it, we know it was going to be a dogfight. You know, we had a battle. Um, you know, we just had to compete. Great arm, both great arms on the mound. We just had to do our thing. We are good. Ryan Geralds, one of New Jersey's top MLB draft prospects, has helped Cranford to a 6-0 start. It's the Cougars hosting Union, the Farmers looking to snap a three-game skid. Critical play of the game comes here. Nick Cassandra hits a shallow fly to left. Dennis McCaffrey slides and makes the catch. This ends the inning. Take another look. McCaffrey saved at least two runs with this web jab. We head to the bottom of the sixth. Union with a 2-0 lead. 
and the Cougars take the lead thanks to small ball. Sebastian Morales lays down the safety squeeze. Morales is safe, the foot's off the bag. Two runs come in. Heads up play by the Cranford catcher, makes it a 4-2 game. And the knockout punch comes courtesy of Ryan Carasino. This ball is belted to left, it's a goner. A three run homer for the Cranford DH. The Cougars score seven runs in the sixth inning to avoid the upset. 7-2 is your final. Cranford is now 7-0 on the season, and we saw a team that plays great defense and heads up baseball. We talk with Morales and Carasino about the sixth inning rally. Well, uh, to be honest, I wasn't going up there thinking I was going to bunt. I was probably going to swing, but when uh, when they called time and I went up to coach, coach asked me, he said, are you going to get it down? I was like, yes, I am. So he told me to bunt. So we had Shea Grady at second. He was going on the cycle. We were definitely going to get two there from there. So we just executed. Yeah, it was a little frustrating at the beginning, but it'll never get to us. I mean, we keep the energy alive in the dugout. And uh, to just come out here, you know, put the exclamation point on a, on a terrific game, I mean, it's just, it feels great, you know? It's just awesome. Montville and Roxbury met in the Morris County Tournament final last season in a game won by the Mustangs. Two of the state's best public school teams meet again on Friday afternoon. Top of the second, it's Montville who strikes first. Caitlin Olenski powers one to the opposite field. It's going to drop in for an RBI double. Olenski will score later on a throwing error, giving the Mustangs a 2-0 lead. Then Mariah Remus McManus steps up. This is deep enough for Savannah Sorella to tag and score. We're tied up at 2 all through three full innings. Top of the fourth here, we've got a runner on third for Grace Kowalski, and this ball is fair. Montville goes back in front and leads 3-2. But Roxbury responds in the next half inning. Angelina Moskella steals third and then heads home. Pressure on the base paths mean we've got a 3-3 game headed to the fifth inning. Then Kendall Faisal steps into the box in the bottom of the fifth, and she's got a special delivery. It's headed right for our camera. This is a moonshot. Faisal hits a solo blast that breaks the tie. It's four to three Roxbury. Faisal tells us where she was aiming. Well, I was just aiming for your camera. I mean, I wasn't trying to hit a home run, but I was like, I just gotta hit like a line drive center field and then it'll just get things started. Now we fast forward to the top of the seventh. Montville gets the tying and go ahead runs on base. Gabby Donsos is up with two outs. She hits a screamer that goes through the hole. In comes the tying run, but the runner headed for third is thrown out. Roxbury's defense makes a massive stop. It's a 4-4 game, and the Gales will come up to bat in the bottom of the seventh. And Roxbury's offense goes right to work. Two runners get on base immediately, and then they're on the run. We've got runners in second and third with no out after a clutch double steal. Mariah Remus McManus is still up. She snares one to first, and Haley Arricchiello races in for the walk-off. Roxbury wins a thriller. Five to four is the final. The Gales improve to five and one on the season with a win that shows some real character. Time to step away. When we come back, we've got a great week of action in lacrosse. The Morristown and Chatham girls go to overtime in a top five showdown. All the highlights when Jersey Sports Zone continues. I'm the director of the Cancer Center, designated by the National Cancer Institute. We are here to make an important distinction. There are cancer centers. And there are NCI-designated cancer centers. Recognized for world-class research. And positive impact on their communities. No single person is going to cure cancer. It'll take a team effort. That's what an NCI-designated cancer center is all about. In New Jersey, there's only one. Rutgers Cancer Institute of New Jersey, together with RWJ Barnabas Health. What's going on everyone, Neri Rodriguez here. The list of big arm talent in New Jersey continues to get bigger. And this week on the Recruiting Roundup, we want to focus on a pitcher from Monroe that will be West Coast bound after his high school career. Let's get to know Harrison Lawlin. The six foot 210 pound righty is off to a hot start in his junior campaign. In 14 innings pitch, Harrison Lawlin has 16 strikeouts so far this year. 
Not bad compared to his 87 Ks as a sophomore. Wallen began the season with an opening day win against GMC Power St. Joseph Metuchen. With the 2023 season not even at the midway point yet, Harrison Lawlin has another year of high school ball ahead of him and will continue his baseball career at the next level for the University of Oregon. Welcome back to Jersey Sports Zone. I'm Mike Frankel on the campus of St. Augustine Prep. We jump back in with lacrosse highlights now and a good central south battle as Rumson Fairhaven makes the trip south to take on the Hermits. A pair of defending state champions square off in Richland. We're tied at one in the first period. Cole Cashin on the move for RFH. The Yale commit fires a shot off the turf and in. Cashin gives the Bulldogs their first lead of the night, two to one. At the other end, the Hermits work the ball around to Noah Plen. Plen loads up, fires, and scores. The junior would add another goal later in the first to give St. Augustine a 3-2 lead after one. RFH trails 9-5 early in the fourth, but the dogs start chipping away. It's 9-6 when Leo Pasalacqua feeds Andy Crotic. Crotic finishes, and all of a sudden, RFH pulls within two with just under three minutes to go. Dogs with possession again as Cashian keeps the momentum going. Cole Cashian scores his third goal of the night. It brings RFH within one with just over two minutes remaining. Bulldogs with possession again. It's Crotic to Leiden. Luke Leiden shoots and scores. That's Leiden's third goal of the night. RFH scores four unanswered goals in the fourth to send this game to overtime. Second straight year, these teams go to OT. St. Augustine winning on the road last year. RFH returns the favor. Just under a minute left in overtime when Leiden finds a wide open Crotic, and that's the winner. Andy Crotic's second goal of the night caps a thrilling RFH comeback. We drove up uh, an hour and 45 uh, to this field. Uh, we weren't coming out here with a loss, so in timeouts, we just talked it over. We're player led. So we talked it over and we uh, had to win this game and we pulled through and uh, over time. Uh, yeah, it feels amazing. Uh, we had to come out with the win. And so uh, give it up to the D and the O, face off X, and we all just worked together and put, a, put up a good game and we came out with the win. It's the home opener for the champs. Mountain Lakes won the Tournament of Champions last year and they're already 2-0 this season. It's the Lakers facing off against Bergen Catholic. Bergen took an early lead, but Mountain Lakes settled in Jimmy Elliott buries this shot, falling backwards. Then, two minutes later, Kevin Gillespie finds Connor Higgins, and he fires off a fastball. Higgins with a bullseye shot for the goal. It's Mountain Lakes with a 3-1 lead late in the first quarter. Joey Marinaccio gives Bergen Catholic a little bit of juice with this great spin and shot, but Bergen trails 4-2 at the end of one. Mountain Lakes would close the first half in style. Look at this beautiful pump fake from Nick Finicaro. It sets up a goal. The Lakers have a commanding 7-3 lead at the halftime break. Bergen Catholic makes a push back in the third with this goal from Jimmy Carey. But the fourth quarter not only belonged to Mountain Lakes, it was the Giacomo Bavacqua show. Bavacqua buries a hat trick in the final 12 minutes and that fuels Mountain Lakes to the win. 11-7 is the final. Bergen Catholic suffers their first loss of the year, dropping to 3-1. Mountain Lakes improves to 3-0. Bavacqua had four goals. Kevin Gillespie had four assists. Mary Rodriguez coming to you from sunny Chatham where today's girls lacrosse matchup turning up the heat as the fourth ranked 3-0 Cougars taking on number three 2-1 Morristown for a top 20 showdown and rematch of last year's Morris County final. Fairfield commits Stella Straka getting Chatham on the board first as they take a 2-0 lead 10 minutes in. Junior Anna Sporn answers back with two goals of her own for Morristown to tie us up as 12-29 remains. But Chatham going on a brief run to close out the half. Ashley Kiernan nets her second of the day as six seconds remain. Cougars ahead 8-5 at the break. Coming out of halftime, Megan O'Brien fired up. OB, who had a score in the first, sinks three goals in the second. Morristown trails 9-8 as 14 minutes remain. Stella Straka completes the hat trick shortly after to put Chatham up 11-9 with 9.08 left. We remain at that score until the 3.37 mark when Anna Sporn still working that spin move. That's her fourth goal of the afternoon. 
Megan O'Brien with the game on the line gets contact and somehow gets her shot to fall for her fifth score of the afternoon. It comes with 155 left and we will head to overtime. With under 30 seconds to go, it's looking like double OT. Not if Anna Sporn has anything to say about it. Sporn in overtime, the spin, that's game. Anna Sporn wins it for Morristown with just 20 seconds left. 12-11 your final, the third-ranked Colonials pull off the late win. Megan O'Brien and Anna Sporn both finished with five goals and an assist. Sporn's golden goal in overtime, the play of the day. Here she is afterwards. Feels amazing just because like we were down in, at halftime and just like we really dug in and worked all together as a team and secured the win. <laughs> Before OT, we were all like, this is our redemption, like this is time to get like what we missed last last year. Time for one more break. This week's top 10 is a mix of unique plays and clutch performances. Who's number one? Find out next. If you need to see a doctor, RWJ Barnabas Health has two easy ways to do it from anywhere. You can see an urgent care provider 24 seven on any device with our telemed app. Or use our website to book a virtual visit with an RWJ Barnabas Health Medical Group provider or specialist, even as a new patient. You've taken every precaution, and so have we. So don't delay your care any longer. RWJ Barnabas Health. Let's be healthy together. We go into the JSZ archives for a blast from the past, brought to you by Princeton Orthopedic Associates. Hey everyone, I'm James Mooney. Franklin's Diamond Miller saw her hoop dreams become a reality when she was selected number two overall in the WNBA draft. So this week we go back to 2019 where Mike Frankel profiled Miller after winning JSZ's Miss Hoop Zone Award. Diamond Miller accomplished just about everything a high school basketball player can accomplish in New Jersey. More than 2,000 career points, a McDonald's All-American, Gatorade State Player of the Year. When it comes to New Jersey, she goes down as one of the best players in the state. I think she'll be remembered for, for years to come, for sure. The individual accolades are amazing. The team achievements are astonishing. Miller led Franklin to three consecutive Group 4 state titles. She led the Warriors to two Tournament of Champions crowns. And Miller led this year's Franklin squad to a perfect record. Blast from the Past is brought to you by Princeton Orthopedic Associates, a proud sponsor of Jersey Sports Zone for the last five years. We're getting set to wrap up another episode of Jersey Sports Zone. Of course, before we do, it's time for the JSZ Top 10 Plays of the Week. We've once again rounded up the very best from all over the Garden State. So here they are, the Jersey Sports Zone Top 10. Number 10. The Stangs with a chance to go in front later in the sixth, but Evan Taylor makes the diving stop at third. The Maryland commit to his feet as he fires to second to complete the double play. Taylor helps Ocean City get out of the inning, still tied at three. Number nine. We saw some great defense in this game. Jaden Miller looks like he's got a base hit to right, but hold the phone. Sean Riley comes up firing from right field and gets the out. Wow, it's a 9-3 put out. Great awareness by Riley to get the out. Number eight. Top four, the Green Knights go yard. Felix Gonzalez with a laser quick solo blast. That lands in the courtyard just below the steps to the football field. It's fair and gone. Gonzalez trots around the bases as St. Joe's fires out to a six nothing lead on the reigning non-public A state champs. Number seven. Then Kendall Faisal steps into the box in the bottom of the fifth and she's got a special delivery. It's headed right for our camera. This is a moonshot. Faisal hits a solo blast that breaks the tie. It's four to three Roxbury. Faisal tells us where she was aiming. Well, I was just aiming for your camera. I mean, I wasn't trying to hit a home run, but I was like, I just got to hit like a line drive center field and then it'll just get things started. Number six. Manasquan has quite the response. Parker Harms looks downfield. He sees the keeper out of the cage. Harms from long distance. It's in. Woo. Harms was one of the longest goals we've ever seen in New Jersey high school acts. Take another look at this one as we slow it down. You can track the ball at the top of your screen easily over 60 yards. 
Parker Harms ties the game at one at the end of the first. Number five. We jump to the bottom of the seventh where Zelaney facing a bases loaded situation needs just one more out. Sorella Gallucci, who put two runs on the board earlier, makes a diving stop and talk about a heads up play. Gallucci applies the tag at third to end it. Three nothing your final, Robbinsville takes down number 10 Steiner. Number four. Critical play of the game comes here. Nick Cassandra hits a shallow fly to left. Dennis McCaffrey slides and makes the catch. This ends the inning. Take another look. McCaffrey saved at least two runs with this web gem. We head to the bottom of the six. Union with a two nothing lead. Number three. Not if Anna Sporn has anything to say about it. Sporn in overtime, the spin, that's game. Anna Sporn wins it for Morristown with just 20 seconds left in OT. Number two, St. Augustine winning on the road last year. RFH returns the favor. Just under a minute left in overtime when Leiden finds a wide open Crotic. And that's the winner. Andy Crotic's second goal of the night caps a thrilling RFH comeback. 10 to nine your final. Revenge for the Bulldogs and an early season statement win in South Jersey. And the number one play of the week. The exclamation point comes courtesy of some stellar defense. Gavin Degnan sends this one deep to center. Does it have the distance? Matt Brunner twists and leaps. He comes down with it. An unbelievable catch by the RBC center fielder. We've got a great A web gem in Red Bank. Take another look. Brunner with some highway robbery as he's able to hold on to the baseball. The Casey's did it all. Great pitching, big hits, and some stellar plays in the field. It's already been an incredible spring with Anthony Volpe making it to opening day with the New York Yankees. Now Diamond Miller drafted number two overall in the WNBA draft. And a couple of weeks from now, the NFL draft will be upon us. More New Jersey names making their professional dreams come true. For our team at Jersey Sports Owner, Rich Crampanis, thanks so much for watching. We'll see you here next Sunday at 11.30 a.m. on WLNY with more New Jersey High School Sports on Jersey Sports Zone TV. I'm the director of the Cancer Center, designated by the National Cancer Institute. We are here to make an important distinction. There are cancer centers. And there are NCI-designated cancer centers. Recognized for world-class research and positive impact on their communities. No single person is going to cure cancer. It'll take a team effort. That's what an NCI-designated cancer center is all about. In New Jersey, there's only one. Rutgers Cancer Institute of New Jersey, together with RWJ Barnabas Health. Promotional consideration paid for by the following. The proceeding was a paid program presented by Jersey Sports Zone and RWJ Barnabas Health.